Hey guys, welcome to game two between Crossy and Terror. Game one, extremely entertaining, in my opinion. Upper right in corner, we have Crossy starting as the blue Zerg, bottom left in the corner. We have Dogecoin Holder, aka Terror, starting as the pink Terran. This is going to be on Polypoid. And I'm wondering if we're going to see more of the same from Terror. And actually, I kind of like his decision to opt with more factory style play, especially knowing. I'm wondering if this is just his recent decisions to go for more of this mech style, just being that it's so strong and difficult for Zerg to deal with and kind of puts them in, I feel like it puts them in more uncomfortable positions. You can see that through the mid and late game where it's like you have to do multiple things at once. I feel like it, it's a little, the reason I like it is I feel like it, it's straightforward for the Terran player. They need map control. They need to defend when Zerg's attacking into them. And otherwise it's like get upgrades, mass up, keep your economy rolling. For Zerg, it's much more challenging because you need to macro up somehow. You need to tech up to stay competitive. You need to be everywhere on the map. Uh, it just feels like the, it puts more taxation on the Zerg opponent. So I'm honestly, uh, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't have Medic Marine because I think ultimately uh, the Korean pros know better than anyone that it, you do need to roll back to that eventually because that's the bread and butter, right? That's where it's been forever. But it is. I do like seeing that as far as like an, an eventual thing. And I'm almost wondering if it was a, I'm wondering if that's just what Terra's trying to roll into at the moment. I haven't been able to watch a lot of his games as of late. Um, looks like he's not grabbing, well, he's not grabbing a barrier. Actually, is he gonna 14 CC? Looks like he's thinking about going for a 14 command center because he's showed no movements for grabbing a barracks. Okay, he's gonna grab a command center, yeah. He's going to go 14 Command Center. Ooh, wow. 14 Command Center on a four-player map. A little bit risky. So there's the spawning pool drop. At easy, I think this is going to pay off, though, because first of all, he's at cross spawn. And Crossy scouting upper left first. We'll see what he follows it up with. Usually this is a Medic Marine follow-up, but this gives you, and yeah, there's the barracks to kind of provide, which is needed in case Zerglings come across. But this is, I don't want to call this the pro, the Terran version of the Protoss Fold Nexus because it's not exactly equivalent, but it is. it gives you a big economic bump and puts you in a very strong position against your Zerg opponents. Drone making its way bottom right. And here's the other thing. Crossy's going to scout this very, very late. Spawning pool just finished. And on top of that, he I don't think he's going to produce a lot of Zerglings to even be in a position to threaten this. So he's just going to have to make decisions as far as what he goes, as far as build order to follow. On top of everything else. And also if Terror wants to roll back into that factory style build. Kind of gives him a, a speedy bump on doing that as well. Looks like we are seeing two hatch play from Crossy. Still doesn't have that scout. SCV's going to make that way uh, its way across. Maybe are the Zerglings just going to hold the ramp? Are they going to catch this SCV? Be able to stop the information? It looks like Crossy re-engaging behind the SCV though. Just going to let it go. And the drone finding that front door, bunker being built. And I believe Crossy's just going to move this to go ahead and grab a third base. I think that is the play. Move it to wherever you want to take your third and go ahead and grab the third. Lots of gas up. We are seeing a factory plop down. The advantage of going the the early command center is you can get that you get that extra economy. You can you really need additional gas. Uh, before, but basically, you get more minerals, things to just get all that stuff out faster. Which means dealing with two hatch muta becomes all the easier. Still, once the mutalisks are out in the air, it's kind of a very intense time. Because if you make one mistake, really, if you get Goliaths out of position where they can be picked off by the mutalisks, if you don't have enough turrets in the exact right spot, oftentimes Zerg can just get the positional advantage there. Really abuse you. SCV moving to the north. I think he's looking for that third hatchery. It looks like Crossy holding up a little bit at that 3 o'clock base. Grabbing that hatchery there now. Spire about halfway finished. Second factory up. Machine shop being built. Things do equalize a little bit, and it's going to be a slightly slower because there were three Marines in this bunker being placed down. Keep in mind, there's that second gas being grabbed. Six Zerglings going to make their way towards the front. And I'm wondering if Crossy's going to try that natural expansion bust once again. This time, 
definitely going to be more difficult because of the bunker in place, because of just the SimCity uh, that's there. The Zerglings are grouping up. It looks like he wants to at least test this front door. Being able to damage that refinery and actually maybe pick off SCVs right there would be critical. Engineering Bay being built. Spire is up. And Mulus being produced. A fourth hatchery already being grabbed from Crossy rather than additional Mutalisks. So it looks like he is opting to go ahead and skip the Mutalisk pressure here. He's still probably going to build some Mutalisks, but delaying the Mutalisks a little bit and getting a hatchery instead. Although I'm not sure that he had the gas um, to produce as many as he wanted to right at that moment. But I like the additional in-base hatchery to get the additional larva, get, the, get that economy rolling. Zerglings now camping towards the front. Some vultures want to make their way out. This is an interesting play from Terror. Actually went for vultures instead of Goliaths. So now building two Goliaths because of the timing of it. The Mutalus, that's forcing the Mutalus actually to do it. I like this. I missed that because I just assumed he was going to go Goliaths to deal with the Mutalisks. But instead, going some vultures. The speed vulture is sneaking through. There's no SimCity on the front door. And with the speed, the Mutalus trying to engage them. But it's going to basically force these mules to engage these vultures and respect their threat. Creep colony being dropped. The mules trying to regroup and re-engage. But that's going to allow some time as well for Terra to go ahead and get some turrets down and get some more Goliaths out. Three factories are down to start increasing that attack force. Three o'clock base, also a little bit more vulnerable in this aspect. So interesting, I like that little bit of play there. Didn't get a lot accomplished with them, and the mules did end up taking the turrets out, but I still feel like that was worth it. Level 1 weapons being upgraded for both players. Char and boosters not quite finished yet. This is still a grouping of eight mulesks that are moving out. And yeah, two turrets, a decent amount of Goliaths, but this is still a lot of territory to cover. The bunker helps, for sure. Crossy should back out. He had a bit of damage there. He's trying to mirror. Now let's see if he moves back out towards that natural expansion to get something accomplished. Grabbing a additional hatchery to go ahead and get that count up to five. And he's building more mutalisks out there. He is droning up though in the, behind this. So it looks like he wants to go ahead and play the economic race this time rather than going for the mid game bust. Peeling off one mutalisk to go ahead and scout what he's up to, gets eyes on the starport and actually gets a good look at the factory count. I like that play on his part. So now he knows what he's up against. He knows and gets a really good idea of what he needs to do. Cancellation right there. Second armory being built. And a queen's nest being, wow, queen's nest at the three o'clock location, potentially to hide that tech. So I think he wants to push a little bit he does have the Hydros done. I think he's going to try to push the Hive a little bit sooner and just, yeah, try to deny information as best he can to Terra in the mid-game. Terra continuing to shell up. He wants to go ahead. So he's still playing the mech style. But he's sending a, a handful of Vultures out here and there, which is slowing down that Goliath count. And it also slows down kind of the timing of when he wants to push out and do kind of that mass damage. It also gives opportunities for terror as long as he has enough larva and enough, enough economy. <laughs> Drone hiding in the back corner as these vultures making their way across. Not able to block the ramp. One vulture down. Second vulture able to get in the main. So going to be able to get some kills. The mules coming all the way back to home base. Also queen spotted... But decent little bit of damage there. Slow Crossy's economy down. Still sitting on three factories, and it's actually gone three machine shops behind this. So it looks like Terror is going to fill in with a lot of siege tanks. Play it a little bit lighter on the Goliaths and try to catch Crossy with basically a move out with a compositional disadvantage where he kind of matched Mutalisks with Goliaths and Hydralis to tanks. Mines also being upgraded. Comsat station. Their evolution chamber has level one weapons upgrading and this is double evolution chamber this time. 
So Crossy definitely wants to try to maintain an economic uh, position here. A radiate has been upgraded. A science vessel is also out, which can greatly mitigate. And this might be actually the timing here. As soon as another siege tank is out. Because basically you have a radiate, you have that science vessel, you have all the Goliaths underneath. A single radiate takes care of all those mutalisks, and then the Hydalisks just get obliterated by the combination of siege tanks and Goliaths otherwise. I, this is one of those, yeah. Moving out now, and I don't know that Crossy, as he's trying to grab another expansion, I don't know that he has enough Hydalisks to engage the attack force that's here. We do see a command center being built. And a radiate being dropped. See if Crossy can go ahead and it looks like he's doing a pretty decent split to regroup. But Terror looks like he, rather than going for uh, the press with this attack force, he's going to go ahead and just move out, continue to use these vultures to harass out in the field, and grab his mineral only and take a, a third base and again play the slow game. This time, however, Crossy. I don't know. I feel like Crossy's in a better position here. I, I don't have any like hard evidence to be like, yeah, he's in better position. He's actually behind in supply overall, but he's got these queens out already. His economy looks solid. I was a little bit worried about an attack right now, where Crossy just doesn't have enough. I don't know that he has enough bulk or would have had enough bulk to really push this back. But if things just play from here, Crossy is up a base, which is about where he wants to be. He does have a decent drone count behind this. He's starting to fill in with the Idolisks. He's got Spawn Broodling upgraded. He's got all sorts of queens out. Each of them look like they're soon going to have enough energy to deal with the siege tanks. And so this is kind of folding back into like a, I don't know, 12 or 13 minute timing where he's got enough queens, each with enough energy to go ahead and drop a Spawn Broodling. And how many queens is this total? That many queens. There you go. So what is that? 8, 9, 10, 11. So 11. And you can see there's not 11 siege tanks here. Just eight. Plus the Mutalisks overhead and the Hydralisks uh, otherwise. So I think Crossy will be in a pretty good position in the mid game. Another command center. Being built. So Terror wants to just play this. Yeah, just straight up mech style. Where's that command center being built? I'm going to try to find it. <laughs> we see it here on the right there, but I'm not sure where it is on the mini-map overall. We'll try to figure it out. But it looks like Crossy wants to just play, yeah, slow, arduous map control game. Use the Vultures to go ahead and deny the additional bases and keep Crossy in that, again, that difficult situation where he doesn't know whether he needs to dedicate forces or not. Phenomenize Carapace upgrading, by the way. Crossy has not yet taken his fifth. So we'll see how this plays out overall. Currently, some decent map control, some decent mine placement out in the field. Sutton colonies being placed. Terror happy to just kind of macro behind this. He is up 10 supply and having a supply lead with the upgrade lead puts you in a good situation overall to deal with Zerg overall. Dropship loading up with the Vulture is going to the north. It looks like Crossy does see that. We'll see if the Mutalisks re-engage. It looks like the Mutalisks are going to opt to engage to the mineral only. That's not enough mutalists to get anything accomplished, so they're going to have to come right back home. One vulture being dropped to go ahead and stop that drone from building that expansion there. That's actually going to be critical. Some queens diving in to wipe out a lot there, but I'm really more interested in these vultures sneaking through and what kind of economic damage they can get done. One drone down, potentially two drones down, getting a handful of kills between them. So a handful of siege tanks wiped out, but not a lot else accomplished at the mineral only. And a decent amount of economic damage, actually a significant amount of economic damage done there. And also a vulture nearby might be able to pick off, critically picks off that drone and slows down that 12 o'clock expansion. There it is. Where was that hiding? Nine o'clock base has been grabbed, but, and is getting saturated immediately by terror. Terror's up 20 supply. Continuing to push those upgrades. The Hydralisks have level 2 Spines, level 1 Carapace. So they're not so far behind as far as just raw upgrades go. But still, this is a mech army. And those siege tanks can absolutely splorch everything underneath. Some overlords moving out just to get spotting information, but getting splorched 
in the meantime. It's the sound effect. Vulture camping out that 12 o'clock base. Some units grouped up to that bottom right-hand corner. I'm wondering if that is for a potential drop. We do see Ventral Sacks being upgraded. I do like drop versus mech. Mutalis is engaging this Goliath in small numbers. But Terror starting to pressure up towards the north. Some vultures sneaking through the lines. Finding some drones right there. Actually, a decent defense, only it looks like a single drone being wiped out. I think Terror has to be aware that a drop is potentially incoming simply because of all the hydros that are hanging out in the bottom right. He is starting to bring those Goliaths and science vessels back. The drop threat is difficult to deal with with the Terran mech armies just because it is so slow and it needs to be everywhere at once. The queen count, you can almost think of queens like the science vessel count comparatively. Overlord's grouping up. The vulture's moving down. I think they're going to be able to see. Yeah, so they already see the overlords grouped up down here. So they know that's incoming. Some queens diving down. Are they going to go for... I don't think they can uh, target vultures, if I recall. <clears throat> Hydro is grouping up to gauge, but you can see the overlords already in position and a radiate dropped. So Terror kind of negating that drop before it even happened and able to get some counterattack. Vultures trying to sneak in that natural expansion. I think they were able to get, so able to stop one drone on gas. Supply count even. Even though the space is up, though, it's been consistently out of drones because of those vultures just doing run-bys. That 12 o'clock base still hasn't been taken, so this has been really three base Zerg versus now four base Terran. And a 200 mech army without late-game hive, without swarm, without uh, lurkers, without ultralisks, without uh, adrenal upgrade, things like that, is a scary thing to approach as a Zerg player. Command center floating up. This actually might turn into an infested command center momentarily. Crossy moving out with a large grouping of his army. It looks like Terra is mirroring him, sieging across the line. Some Hydalists moving in from the north. The Overlord's moving in. I don't know if they have anything or not. Some Irradiates being dropped. Some nice spawn broodlings being dropped into the nine o'clock. The Hydralis pincering in from the south to cut off reinforcements, and it looks like they are going to be able to go ahead and take out this command center. Oh, I want to see command, infested command center so bad. Crossy just letting that base kind of float out the other upper left. You can go ahead and take that momentarily. Bunch of additional spawn broodlings forcing Terra back. Great strike here from Crossy, wiping out all sorts of siege tanks and diving into that natural expansion. Some vultures trying to counterattack at that 3 o'clock base. But as things stand, that 9 o'clock base has been disrupted, that upper left-hand corner has more or less been disrupted, and Terror has lost a lot of map control in the follow-up. Let's see if the Queen can swing around. But Terror doing a turnaround strike and able to wipe woof, Crossy down to 23 drones by wiping out all of the drones at that 3 o'clock base. Looks like that command center is completely wiped out. This... Command Center <laughs> could be picked off down the line. We'll see. I really love Infested Command Centers in matches. I want to see it. Dead Infested's calling for it in chat. There are still Queens around to make it happen. I'm not sure if Crossy kept track of that Command Center, though. We'll see. More Siege Shanks and Vultures moving back in to try to retake map control at that 9 o'clock base. A counterattack moving in. Well, it looks like just to clear mines here at the 6. Crossy re-droning. Not sure he's redroning heavily enough. And he's still sitting at essentially three bases because this is only, what, three drones there? Three bases to two. And I think Terror... We'll see if Terror can regroup and regrab additional bases. He's trying to move these vultures forward. I like that he's kind of using the cheaper units in the vultures, basically treating them like they'd, they're used in other matchups, which oftentimes, for whatever reason... Sometimes aren't utilized in this matchup. Queen... Finding, well, for a second there, I thought he was going to spawn Brood. Looks like he wanted to spawn Broodling and slow down that command center, but instead, uh, just getting wiped out and irradiated. Some additional spawn Broodlings clearing out a lot of these siege tanks. I think Terra's still going to feel comfortable moving up and taking that base, but in the meantime, Crossy wants to try to engage, running into headlong into mines as that Overlord is trailing. 
at that bottom right. Some vultures and a couple siege tanks going to try to stop this attack. Grouping up. This is looks like it's an overwhelming amount of hydralisks. And they might be able to get the command center. And wipe out the rest of this attack force. Crossy with a big supply lead. Terror's supply plummeting. Defense matrix on that final tank, but not lasting for long. That six, that hat, well, the hatchery, that command center certainly going to get wiped out here. And Crossy all of a sudden taking firm control of this match. Two siege tanks trying to defend that nine o'clock, but while that nine o'clock is up, that mineral only has been obliterated, and there's still a sizable hydralisk force walking forward, wiping out science vessels, wiping out all sorts of reinforcements, and there's GG from Terror. So this will move on to a game three. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.